Welcome to another C to Stage tutorial where we will be making super fast beats on the Push 2. So Push 2 is an incredible piece of hardware. It allows me as a musician to have a musical idea and be able to lay down, yeah, like, I don't know, 99% of the idea part of uh, songwriting without ever looking at the Ableton screen. And that's really, really awesome. I mean, you can even do mixing on this thing. Uh, I personally like to use the interface at that point, but it's just so freaking powerful. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you guys through my uh, process when it comes to creating beats and um, how you can get a lot of variance and a lot of really unique character just using the push by itself. Okay, so I have a completely blank blank set right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to load a device, add device. So I'm going to browse over here and you can watch the browsing as I go. User library, presets, instruments. You could load any, load any drum rack, but I'm going to go ahead and load the uh, drum rack that we made together in a previous lesson that has all the samples that I would ever want to use inside of it. Um, I'll put a link to that in the bottom. So I'm going to hit load. And this is so, this drum rack is so full of samples that it's going to take a second to completely get ready. It looks like we're ready to go. Okay. So the next thing I do is I think about the speed that I want. Um, so maybe dun, 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 hit the metronome and I can listen to the speed. Okay. Then I'll just hit record and get ready to do my, to make my first clip. Okay, so that's my first clip. It was <laughs> not very well played. So fortunately, we have the quantize button right here. It's set to a 16th right now, so I just hit it. Now we've got a nice locked-in rhythm there. So I'm going to take the metronome out because we don't want to listen to that the whole time. And let's say I want to add a couple more elements. A, a, a lot of the times when you're just getting started uh, finger drumming, uh, it, you might not be able to get all the elements out in, in one play because it's just, let's face it, it's, it's difficult to do that. So I'll hit the record button and think about some other elements. See if I can change that blippy sound. Okay, so now I've got a little rhythm going on, okay? So the next thing that I want to do is let's go ahead and explore how to browse around inside of these devices so that you can get down into the nitty gritty when it comes to these samples. So we've got, uh, let's go ahead and listen again. If I want to mess with the drum rack that I have, I have to... I can select the area that I'm in up at the top. At the bottom, I can go into different parts of this track. So I have kicks, snares, toms, so on and so forth. If I hit on kicks, I've all of a sudden got all this area that I can edit different parameters in. So something that we can do right off the bat is let's take the sustain down. So now, as you can tell, the kick drum is very, very short. And now I can make it very long, right? So something I like to do is I'll hit the automate button, okay? And now I can now I can record envelopes, automation envelopes into the clip that I'm working with, okay? So I'm gonna hit play and then I'm gonna record the changing of this decay setting in the clip. So here we go. All right, so now we're getting somewhere. And maybe something else I'd like to do is I'll go into the snare drum, okay? And in order to see the different pages inside of this sampler, I have to hit sampler. And now I have to, I, I hit it again, and all of a sudden I have all these parameters I can look at. So let's go to, yeah, uh, panning. That sounds like fun. So I'll go ahead and hit record again, and I'll pan the snare drum around. Okay, 
It all has to do with having this automation switch on and then the record button for your clip, okay? If you have those on, you can automate parameters, right? All right, so let's get out of here. Let's go back to the super drum top level. Okay, we're gonna close this up. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna add some effects, all right? So I've created a effect preset that I'm gonna use, which is I'll make available for you to download. Um, but I just go to user, files, user library, presets, audio effects, audio effect rack, and this earth cry effects volume one. I'm just gonna load that up, okay? So now when I play my clip, what's nice about the push, I should say also, is that it, uh, whatever you load up right away appears right away. This is how you get through your track. Uh, this is how you can navigate through the different parts of your track up here at the top. So if I want to control the super drum rack, I hit super drum rack at the top, and now I can mess with the top level, which is choosing the samples or go into the samples themselves and mess with different parameters of it, right? Or... I can go back to the top level up here at the top and go over to the uh, effects that I just loaded. So, and I'll just show you what they are. There's, right, Bit Crusher. Just, you know, different effects. So, so now we can have a lot more fun. I can hit the automation button and I can start to get some fun effects going on. So. Right? Add some of the other ones. <laughs> so as you can see, boom, we've got a, a really wacky thing going here. And something else I like to do to beats is just, I'm gonna hit the mix button. Go over to, so the mix button makes a whole nother area of, of potentials up here. And I'm gonna go to the A send, and I'm gonna add just a little bit of reverb. And so as you can see, right now we've got some serious, seriously awesome new and very quick edits that we just made to make this whole beat. Okay, so now you might say, well, Anthony, this video has been going on for, I don't know, like four or five minutes. That doesn't seem very fast to me. Well, that's because I was explaining everything. I'm going to go ahead and now make a new beat and a new clip. So I'm going to go to session. And I'm going to launch this second scene here. Okay. And basically what that's doing is that's, that's just making it so that this clip area right here is armed to go next. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the notes. And I'm going to have to zero out all these, <laughs> these crazy effects here. Okay. So I've zeroed them out. Go back to my super drum. I'm gonna choose a different set. Choose a different set of drums here. Okay, so now I've got that going on. I will turn on my metronome. Okay, so now I've got a beat going on. I'm gonna go in and jump over to my effect area. All right, so there we go. I've got a highly personalized beat that I just made in 30 seconds or something. So, so now, uh, those of you that stuck around, I'm going to show you some bonuses, some uh, shortcuts, some some things that make this a lot easier. Okay, so 
Let's make an edit that sucks. So that vocoder is kind of lasting over the, the downbeat. I don't really like that. Something, a really easy way to get rid of those automations is to hit delete right here. Just hold delete and then hit the encoder with your butt, with your finger. Now it's deleted. It deleted the automation just for that knob, okay? That's really, really, really useful, okay? So I can, I can mess this up all that I want, and I can always go back and delete um, different, different automations. Okay, so something else. Um, if you're using the Super Drum Rack or a drum rack where you can choose multiple samples, you actually can even automate the samples that are in the drum rack. So right now, I could be flipping through different drums. Um, let's check this out. So if I have my repeat button on, and I've got these bleeps going on. Let's go ahead and record some 16th bleeps. All right. So you might say, well, Anthony, that's super annoying. Well, check this out. I can automate through different bleeps and kind of get this little glitchy thing going on. So let's try that out. Oh, yeah. So something else that's really nice about this is that let's say I have multiple clips going on of this. I could automate the positions of these and start to create clips with different samples in them. So I think that would make more sense if I just explained it. So what I've done right there is I've just mapped all of these uh, sample change parameters to the clip that I'm working on, okay? So now whenever I play this clip, I'm gonna have those samples, I promise. So I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna make a brand new beat, and this time I'm gonna use a different set of samples. So I'm gonna go to Session, I'm gonna launch that third scene, so that third scene is ready to go, okay? I'm gonna go back to my note, I'm going to then go in and turn off my repeat, I'm going to change the samples now. I'm just going to randomize these samples to a different set. Let's get a different, better hi-hat there. There we go. Something a little more old school. So I'm going to go ahead and record this now. So there's my beat, quantized, oops, had to make my sample uh, just four bars long there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple more hits. <laughs> okay, so here's, there's my beat, and I'm sticking to it. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do some different edits to this beat uh, in the effects. Okay, now I'm going to go back to the drum part, and I'm going to automate these drums to remain the same. Got to hold that kick drum right there, yep, there we go. Okay. And once I get all these parameters set, now check this out. So now I've got this clip going. I can go ahead and play the other clip and it will keep the other settings that I had. So I'm gonna go to session and here we go. Remember this? Now I can go back to the other one.
So yeah, you get the picture. You could you could make uh, an incredibly dynamic live show from scratch just by automating the sample position parameters as well as the effects and stuff like that. So thanks for watching, everybody. Um, I hope this was informative to you. Uh, if you got benefit from this, please consider subscribing, or if you want to support the channel, I have a Patreon link down at the bottom. Uh, yeah, enjoy making the beats. I highly recommend a Push 2. It's an incredibly awesome controller, uh, especially if you're, if you're into uh, creating electronic music, uh, beat-oriented music. It's just uh, bar none. Nothing will give you as much expression uh, and, and variance in your tones. So enjoy making beats, everybody, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.